Inazuma's Sewer Hall mod has been one that has been quite hotly anticipated, both by myself when I first saw it in an SRB2 Direct quite a while ago, and by the larger SRB2 community. We've already covered both of the characters revealed in that initial trailer, but it came as quite a surprise to me when I first started really looking through the mod just how much extra stuff comes packaged with them. You read their download page, there's a custom tutorial, brand new lobby hangout stage, and a bunch of taunts and additional mod interconnectivity. You go on YouTube, someone's made a 30 minute video on the secret features this mod includes, namely an extra hard final level and boss, and someone else has several videos on all of the different monologues this wolf guy can have with different characters. I start looking at the PK3 file on Slade, there's a bunch of different ending screens, and said evil wolf guy has been photoshopped onto Big Chungus. Was the amount of content hidden from the public eye during development? Or was I just not paying attention? It wouldn't be the first time. Considering how much there was, I couldn't exactly leave it all to go unmentioned, but I also couldn't find a good way to fit it in with the character discussions. So, here we are, the third and final part of this review. Let's finish this. The first thing that we can talk about is the fact that Inazuma and Aether can be paired together in a single save file to act as a duo, in a similar vein to Sonic and Tails. It's similar in that both characters are running through a stage together, and as such opens up some new possibilities, but the smaller details do actually separate this duo from others quite significantly. First off, Inazuma and Aether are treated as equals in this partnership, with neither taking the role of a main character and neither being demoted to the helper. When playing as Sonic and Tails, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who will fight to claim that this is an equal partnership, at least in terms of gameplay. As much as the stories and character bios throughout the Sonic series will try and claim that both characters see each other as partners in crime and brothers from other mothers, when it comes to actually playing as the two together, it's just Sonic who can occasionally summon an instant elevator ride. Tails is absolutely not on equal footing with Sonic in gameplay, which can make the two seem more, more like a master and a lackey, more so than friends. Instead of that, Inazuma and Aether can be swapped between using the custom buttons, which you'll end up doing fairly regularly to take advantage of their strengths. As such, neither feels like they're taking the spotlight from the other, as you'll swap between Inazuma for speed to Aether for platforming, and then back to Inazuma for dealing with bosses or enemies quickly. Seeing as the two are lovers, or at least I assume they are, because there's really no platonic explanation for stuff like this, I think that's a very important decision to have been made, and while there are a dozen different possible reasons the team might have done this, I think the work it does to suggest their narrative dynamic is far better done than what should be a relatively similar relationship with Sonic and Tails, at least to the extent that they should all feel equal to one another. Unfortunately though, your partner when you're not controlling them is still basically useless, much as Tails is an SRB2. Neither will ever use a single ability under any circumstance, and their pathfinding AI is so useless that they'll completely disappear for large chunks of a level after getting stuck on something. I'd make a joke about literally me and all that, but I have the self-respect to say I'm not quite on this level of running into corners of pillars. Thankfully, switching between the two simply teleports the follower to your exact current location, rather than sending you to them, so confusion is reduced and you don't lose chunks of progress. Character switching is done fairly often in the vanilla game, but doubly so in the extra stages the Silverhorn mod introduces. The first one you'll likely travel to is the revamped tutorial, which has been swapped from some sort of collection of Tron-like neon grid structures to a past or whimsical romp above the clouds. In terms of level design, I mean it's a tutorial, so it can't be anything genuinely interesting, but I think it does a really good job at explaining how to play as both Inazuma and Aether. Both characters will discuss their mechanics as you play, to the point that the one trait I can confidently say they share is that they are very verbose. Every mechanic test is preceded by a good long chunk of pretty dry explanations that usually go far beyond a basic explanation of how to use the ability, a good half of which completely kills your momentum during the monologue, as they start to go into detail about the colours of their spells, or how I need to use my abilities in tandem to cross large gaps. No, I have eyes to tell me what colour your spells are, Aether, and it doesn't help a colourblind person to say what colour spells are either. That's why you have symbols. 
Yes, Inazuma. I think I can figure out that this large gap will require me to use more than one of my abilities. Clearly, I can't get over it using just one. You don't need to affirm what I already know. Ultimately, this is far better than not giving ample explanations of how your abilities work, and a redundantly long tutorial is acceptable in a game where the tutorial is optional like here, but it's funny to see the two partners explain their moves as if they had barely met. Ultimately, this tutorial stage will lead on to Castle Elbowway, which is sort of, vaguely, kind of your hub. Continuing on a similar aesthetic to the tutorial, with pinks, whites, greens, blues, grass, trees, so on and so forth, this is a hangout stage, which means I don't like or get it. I'm a lonesome, introverted, no friend, single player only kind of guy, so I don't see the appeal of hanging out in SRB2 actual multiplayer mode, so, or even running through the campaign with friends, but SRB2 doesn't seem like a robust enough platform to make meaningful and interesting spaces to simply relax. It's not much of a looker or sounder to chill out within, and there isn't a dense sandbox to really make your own fun with. Just go touch grass together, or failing that, play Fortnite. I mean, which game has Alan Wake as a playable character? I rest my case. Until someone makes an Alan Wake mod, Fortnite 1, SRB2 0. It looks nice and whimsical and music is alright, but you can skip right past in most circumstances by just going back once you've spawned. One of the rooms inside Cast Level Way though, is the Artifact Room, inside of which you can find pedestals for both the Chaos and Soul Emeralds. Of course, you'll be wanting to collect these to unlock Super and Soul forms, but the main story of the Silverhorn mod is triggered upon collecting all 7 Chaos Emeralds. Upon doing so, Simply travel to a level end with 50 rings and zoom through the wormhole to enter Inazuma's Mindscape. You'll be greeted with a rare cutscene, which I'll get onto in a moment because I'm very impressed, but for now we'll stick with the level itself. Mindscape is probably one of the hardest things you can do in SRB2, with the only competitors for the title possibly being Azure Temple and maybe Aerial Garden. As such, stock up on your lives, you'll need them or unlock Pandora's box and turn on infinite lives there. A linear platforming gauntlet designed to test your skills with the Silverhorn characters, where any mistake is liable to be fatal and trial and error is key, this is honestly one of my favourite parts of the mod. The simple matter of fact is, a tightly designed SRB2 level is rare. Modded levels are all over the board when measuring by any metric, and even the vanilla levels need to be designed to be played by any of six different movesets. So playing a level which demands your full attention and test your skills with just one character's moveset is a breath of fresh air. Mindscape is challenging, yes, but it is, mostly, fair. Unless your abilities begin to play up, every new section will push you just a little further, with little to no leeway for skips or shortcuts. Apart from this one I found, which I'm very proud for finding. I always play as Inazuma for this because it feels very clearly designed to be played as him. But even when I occasionally switch to Aether to compensate for the inconsistent boat stream lock-on sometimes, there's not a huge amount you can cut out. The entire location is prickly and inhospitable, a collection of rickety wooden structures and red into cliffs floating over an endless blue void. As it's apparently a physical manifestation of Inazuma's mind, which is to say it's the mind of a brusque monk ravaged by an evil warlock intent on taking control of his paralyzed body, the foreboding appearance seems apt, and it's paired with an oppressive custom theme. Because the entire level, which can last 12 to 15 minutes, uses only this one theme, which lasts just over three, it can get repetitive, but it's so good that I don't really mind too much. I can't really remember the music that plays in the tutorial, and Cast Level Way isn't really my style, but this theme has definitely stuck in my mind. In general, all of the levels, and indeed the whole mod, do excellently in the art design department with tons of custom sprites and textures giving it all a very magical feel. What else? I'm about to get quite negative about something in a moment, so I'm just trying to list off the remaining good points about things I've already discussed. Uh, I like having get Inazuma and Aether to hug. It's interesting to see a duo in SRB2 that are in a romantic relationship, as probably the vast majority seem to be just friends or colleagues. Not much comes out of it in terms of how they are written or anything, but I like some variety. Uh, a fun thing with Castle Elverway being so massive 
is that you get to really stack up the Norsox to absurd degrees, which is never not fun. Uh, I like how the level design of Mindscape takes advantage of how it's not real, with fading geometry, moving walls, and floating water floors. I admit I'm no programmer, but this seems like really advanced stuff for an engine released 24 years ago. Alright, I'm out of good stuff, let's just go on to Fat Solo. Once you reach the end of the Mindscape Gauntlet, you have a final showdown with a sorcerer that's plaguing Inazuma, otherwise known as Fat Solo. Of course, this conflict over who gets to control the body will not be resolved with words, but rather action. So a boss fight is the only real answer. One hell of a boss fight it is. It's a multi-phaser, but the phases are so distinct that they're practically different fights. Not least that I think the second phase is the best boss in SRB2, modded or otherwise, while I would happily sell my soul to Fat Solo, who is supposedly the devil or something, I don't know, to delete that first phase. As such, I'll discuss the phases as if they are distinct fights, so any time I use the term Fat Solo, I'm referring to exclusively to the first phase, Moon Reaver the second. Alright. Anyway, both phases sort of necessitate that you bring Aether into Mindscape, though for very different reasons. When facing Fat Solo, it's because you otherwise have no consistent way to hit them. He floats in his stupid little tree in the middle of his stupid little pond in the middle of a dimply little arena, doing magic spells and stuff. As in Azuma, the only way you can get high enough to hit him is to run around this arena enough to build a good couple of stacks of Neurosock before bolstering one of the surrounding orbs to bounce up to his level. You can easily do this once or twice without a hit, but there's about a dozen different things that can go wrong. And because Fat Solo has at least 8 HP, I'm not counting, one will almost certainly get to you. It might be that the boat string doesn't target an orb properly, so you miss it and because Inazuma has no verticality, you're doomed to plummet into the void. It might be that you get hit, which is fair enough, but then in the time it takes you to build back up Neurosox, you're left exceedingly vulnerable. It might be that you're in the void aiming for an orb when a laser attack spawns on top of you and effectively guarantees your death. It might be that targeting Fat Solo doesn't work, and in trying to fandangle something out of the failure, you leave yourself vulnerable to the otherwise borderline harmless fireballs that chase you around the arena. It might be that you hit Fat Solo, but in doing so, it triggers his explosion attack that knocks you into the pond underneath him, which will probably cause you to get stuck until another attack finishes you off. Again, you'll probably do a hit or two on Fat Solo as Inazuma easily enough, but eventually something will catch up to you and cause your demise because there's just too many things that can go wrong. It's not even an interesting fight. The only things you can do every time is run in a circle and eventually aim for an orb, and all of Fat Solo's attacks are completely harmless until they arbitrarily actually do hit you. There's no variation to your strategy. The mid-phase tempo shift all bosses have is so minimal as to have no difference, and the only thing that changes between attempts is what cheap shot actually gets you. Aether doesn't actually make the fight enjoyable or any less brain dead, she so basically just allows you to ignore a lot of the potential problems with her crystal wings and sword rain. All of the cheap stuff Fat Solo can do is negate it as long as you don't try and fly outside the arena, get too close to him to trigger his magic explosion, and put even a minimal amount of effort into registering his attacks. Terrible fight, an hour of my life wastes in Azuma, and an annoying but brain dead fight when playing as Inazuma and Aether, sandwiched between the far better Mindscape and Moon Reaver. Luckily, a checkpoint is set between the phases, so you only need to deal with this tryhard with his rip off air suit and inhibitor rings once before you get to the good bit Moon Reaver. Still can't recommend playing as just Inazuma here any less, as Moon Reaver has 50 HP and you get barely any opportunities to get hit in with a boat stream. But as Aether, this is the best boss I've seen in SRB2, period. A tense encounter with a perfect level of talent, with plenty of attacks that each test a different skill of yours as you trade blows to Sword Rain and make the most of every opportunity for attack. There's a clearly defined tempo shift halfway through, the music is fantastic, the arena is climatic, the enemy is intimidating, there's a genuine risk and reward as you choose to hold off attacks until safe, or do a bit of chip damage by rushing headfirst into danger. The massive increase in health has given the dev team a ton of space to try the things the usual 8 HP boss formula never could, and, of course, the shift to a new camera's perspective really highlights just how momentous this fight is. I'll go more in depth about the cool stuff the mod does in a moment, but this genuinely shocked me when I first got to this fight. Again, 
do not attempt to do this, it's just in Azuma. You'll be here for hours. But this absolutely justifies slogging through the god awful first phase. Of course, it'd be better if the first phase wasn't crap. But I'm on too much of an adrenaline high to care and dry about now. I've basically gone too acclimatized to this game to remember just how lackluster the boss fights are. But you're telling me this was possible the whole time? I mean, between this and the stuff I'm about to discuss now, I hope it's not too much of a surprise to learn just what score I'm going to give Silverhorn. Obviously, the Moon Reaver fight is phenomenal and floored me when I first saw the camera lock onto him, but it isn't the first thing I've seen that really showed to just how much this mod pushes SRP2 as a whole forward. That came at the start of Mindscape, when you jump through the portal and enter a cutscene. And not just a slideshow like you get every time you boot up the game, but an honest to goodness, animated, in game cutscene. It's. I mean. Well. Look, I've been playing SRB2 for a while now, and some of the primitive limits the game has I've either gone used to or just assumed were thrust onto the dev team due to engine constraints. Based off my knowledge of how the Doom engine works, this was kind of like if you had to hand someone a medieval manuscript and then the final page had a colour TV in it. It helps that it's a pretty good cutscene too, with dynamic camera movement and unique sprites, so it doesn't look like a snippet of gameplay awkwardly edited to look cinematic. Silverhorn generally does actually have a story arc with genuine, minor effects on the game. Outside of a few text boxes in the tutorial in Castle Elverway, it doesn't really kick off until Mindscape, but it sets up the showdown with Fat Solo and the relationship between him, Inazuma and Aether pretty well. It kind of stops until after defeating Fat Solo, at which point you get some more text boxes explaining the Moon Reaver transformation as it happens, and then you get a final monologue after defeating that. It goes on about free will and saving the multiverse and stuff. Flies over my head, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be able to catch up on the law somewhere. Before Fat Solo uses the last embers of his soul to try and kill you as the Mindscape collapses. With him effectively defeated though, Inazuma gets one last power up in his titsless silver horns, which becomes a permanent Saint Steer sprite, which is great, before you blast through the final escape. This is supposed to be a climactic, cathartic power trip to cap off the story, but to be honest, I was stuck here for a while. I couldn't figure out how to get through the gates. It's very cool when you do though, and after repeating the process a couple of times, you get another cutscene where Inazuma lays his fat solo soul to end him permanently. I was grinning from ear to ear at this point. It's cheesy and the writing is a bit sonen anime melodrama, but it works, goddammit. I want to make sure Fat Solo stays down after that first phase of a boss fight. And even after all of that, you get another semi-animated cutscene with revamped credits exclusively for the Silverhorn mod. At this point I'm running out of things to say about how good I think these are. This is probably the worst though, if only because of some weird camera movements and awkward movements of stationary sprites. But it's an animated cutscene, in SRB2! Having anything in the first place puts you in the upper echelon here, so I'll take some weird angles, alright? And after all that, there's still an endings mechanic. Depending on the other actions you took in that save file, you get one of four endings, though it is noticed across all files which one you've collected so you can view them in the portrait room in Castle Elverway. I've only figured out how to get three myself, though I text Slade to figure out how to get the last one. The bad ending is reached by just defeating Eggman without collecting all of the emeralds, which shows Inazuma later beaten in a burning forest. Pretty grim. The neutral ending is done by collecting all of the emeralds but ignoring Mindscape, which just says Inazuma and Aether watch as Knuckles does something with them in the Master Emerald. There's a good ending which I haven't got, though the Slade comments say you get it for entering Mindscape but not beating it. Is that something you can do if you lose all your lives? Are you kicked back out to the original states? I wouldn't know because I'm too much of a coward to enter it with anything less than infinite lives. Finally, beating Mindscape will give you the true ending, which just has a bunch of popular SRB2 OCs partying in Greenflower Mountain. I checked and I think I've only covered 13 of them, so I need to get more adventurous in my coverage. It's a simple system, but well executed in a game that doesn't really offer a way to implement something more complex. Overall, I can't really recommend Silverhorn enough. Inazuma and Aether are both very well-made characters individually, and while they both have some minor flaws, 
that to nowhere near enough for me to refrain from extolling their virtues. But what really boosts the mod is the sheer amount of extra content. There's a lot, I've written just over 4,000 words in it just now, and I haven't even gone particularly in depth about any of it. And while there are some weak points here or there, <coughs> fat solo, <coughs> the good parts once again massively outside them. It's a pretty heavy barrier to entry, but the Moon Reaver boss alone is worth it, and the other stuff lifted further into exalted 10 out of 10 territory. I'll even go one step further. I don't just recommend Silverhorn, I think it's a must play. The only other mods I can think of that I would say something like that for, that I've played obviously, would be X Momentum, Metroid Vanguard, and D102 Gamma. So, if you know anything about those mods, you can see it's highly respectable company. Go play Silverhorn. Start watching this video if you haven't already downloaded the mod and go download it. I've had a very special mod sent to me recently that I'll be using in the next video, though I will break a little from my traditional formats. I hope you'll be interested in that and that you enjoyed this video. Ciao.